about, I do not believe Spanish people, we grew up that way. Like, oh, don't say it because, no, no, no. If God told you, there's nobody that could stop it. There's nobody that could stop it. Remember, when the spies went into look at Jericho, there were 12 spies and 10 of them didn't see the same thing. So not everybody has to believe. I just need one person to believe because I'm a spy for the Lord. I see the land. I don't see grasshoppers. I don't see myself as little. I know that Christ is big in me and I just need one other person to believe and we're going to take this city. Amen? Amen. Can we just clap it up for Mother's Day coming up? Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. All right, let's get into the message. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We're going to be reading today from 1 Samuel. We're going to read the whole chapter in Samuel and then a couple of verses in 2 Samuel. We have a three-part series next week. Um, Sister Elena is going to be uh, sharing the word. So we're going to lay down some cover fire for her, and then she's going to pick it up with the Lord. Osiris, we're ready to go? Okay. Now, it's interesting about Samuel because Samuel, in the book of Samuel, uh, Samuel the prophet, he is a principal character who anointed King David and King Saul. Uh, Samuel, the Bible says that Samuel's words never fell. That's powerful. Imagine everything that you speak, God backs that up. That's the timing of the spirit. So Samuel and uh, uh, 1 and 2 Samuel were originally one book in the Hebrew scriptures. When the scriptures were translated into Greek, they joined 1 and 2 Samuel and 1 and 2 Kings. They were all one. They were brought into complete history to explain the Hebrew monarchy. Then it was split up into uh, one, two, three, and fourth kingdoms, meaning the books. Samuel and Kings were later separated again, but the divisions of the Greek translations persisted. So it resulted in what we have today. One Samuel, second Samuel, one Kings, and two Kings. <coughs> A Jewish tradition shows that Samuel was the author of the first part of the book, and that prophet Nathan and the seer Gad were the authors of the remainder. Some parts of the book were written after Samuel's death, so we know that Samuel didn't write everything. So where all of this is taking place is in Shiloh, and it's located 20 miles north of Jerusalem, which was the worship center of Israel during this time. There were three feasts that, there are seven feasts of the Lord, but not every feast, <coughs> excuse me, not every um, appointed time of the Lord is a feast. For example, the feast of first fruits, you don't have an actual feast, but it is uh, Passover, Pentecost, and the feast of weeks. So as we read in, in 1 Samuel, excuse me. As we read in Samuel today, we're going to see how this all takes place in this trip up north <coughs> Lord come on so we read this in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit I'm going to talk to you today about a woman named Hannah Hannah was loved by God but Hannah's biggest issue was her timing now there was a certain man named Ramathium Zophim of the mountains of Ephraim and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of <coughs> the son of Elihu, and the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, and Ephraimite. And he had two wives. Let me stop right there for a second. <coughs> I need a breath mint or something. I've been um, dealing with the, a little cold. I'll take that second one. The Lord is abundant. You know, everybody knows Bible verses when it benefits you, but when it's time to get cut up, we're like, that's not what it says. <laughs> Praise God. Help me, Lord. 
Um, when you see polygamy in the Bible, I want to just say this as a covering for education. Polygamy means when you have more than one wife, when you have more than one spouse. <coughs> so if you look at the families that practice polygamy in the Bible, all of them had a difficult time. So some people try to twist the word of God and say like, oh, you see, you know, God allowed these things. Now, just because it's happening doesn't mean that God approves of it, number one. Number two, all of the people that have polygamous families, <coughs> all of the people that have polygamous families had a lot of issues in their lives. Amen. So God also told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply. Something very interesting that I found in understanding polygamy is that when women had no husband, they were sold into slavery or prostitution. So at times, you see this happening, it was to protect the women from falling in further into sin. Amen? So I just want to cover that in the name of Jesus. So this man had two wives. The name of one of them was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up from his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Also, the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and all her daughters. Verse 5. <coughs> but Hannah does it about four times, I believe, in chapter 1. But Hannah. But Hannah. So, Penina had all these kids, but Hannah, he would give a double portion to. For he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. Now, it doesn't say that the womb didn't work, Sister Arlen. It says that the Lord closed her womb. So we see that there's things that's happening in Hannah's life that Hannah's biggest enemy was not that God closed her womb, was not the devil, and was not Penina, and was not the husband. Hannah's biggest issue was her comparison. She was comparing her life to another woman's life. Women do not compare their life with another woman's life. Wise women know that God is the one that is sovereign over their lives. Wise women know what I have, you don't have. What you have, I don't have. Wise women know to clap for the other woman. That's what a wise woman does. That's what a kingdom woman does. Thank you, bro. That's what a wise woman does. Hannah had a double portion. Penina didn't have that. Penina didn't have, Penina didn't have what Hannah had. Hannah had the love of her husband. Hannah had a double portion of everything the husband had. But all Hannah could do was look at the one thing that she didn't have. Hannah's biggest enemy was that her time clock was different than God's time clock. You must remember that your time clock, it can be like God's time clock. God wants it to be according to his time clock. That's why you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. She couldn't even look at how much she was blessed. All she could look at was that she didn't have this one thing. The husband, he didn't look when in the Jewish culture when you couldn't have kids, you were Men of you were you were thrown away. It was a faux pas if you couldn't have kids. There was something wrong with you, not with the man ever, which we know science disproves that. And actually, in science, I wrote a paper about this in nursing school. 90% of the time that there's an infertility issue, it's actually in the husband. Praise God. Somebody else wrote a paper too? Amen. <laughs> so we see that. The Bible doesn't say why the Lord closed her womb. 
But we could see that even though her womb was closed, her issue was the timing of God and her issue was understanding God. Just because you don't see your life being blessed in this moment, just because you don't see what God is doing over the life of your children does not mean that it's not going to come to pass. It doesn't mean that. It does not mean what you think it means. This is a story of God's perfect timing on a life. We're watching the perfect timing of God. <coughs> As we see in verse 5, God says, But to Hannah he would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah, although he closed her womb. Verse 6, here Penina comes back, and her rival also provoked her severely. So basically what Penina used to do was go, Ha, 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 you ain't got no kids. But that's not Penina's fault. Because what Hannah didn't know was that Penina was the chisel to bring out the anointing of God in her life. What, Penina, what Hannah didn't know is that all of the persecution that she was facing was supposed to push her closer to God. Penina was the instrument of God to bring out the greatness in Hannah, but she couldn't see it. Because all she wanted to do was compare and say, I don't have that. The devil knows what you want. The devil knows what you're pleading for, but you can't live for what you want. You have to live for the glory of God in your life. That's a big difference. A lot of Christians are depressed because they don't see what they want instead of seeing that God has blessed them. So we see Penina says in verse 6, an arrival also provoked her severely look at this to make her miserable nobody can make you miserable you make yourself miserable it's like when people go oh you little johnny's pushing my buttons today mentira del diablo that's a lie from the devil nobody should be pushing your buttons nobody should have that much control over your life that they can make you mad or they can make you sad nobody should have that much control over your life because if they do that means the holy spirit doesn't control your life Nobody should be able to make you feel a certain way. What it is, is your expectations need to be managed. You see, because Hannah was looking at Penina, and she was saying, well, if she's blessed, then I should have what she has. But Hannah has to see, no, 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 what she has, that ain't for me. Because what I have is a double portion. For all we know, Penina was really jealous that she had the double portion. So now you got somebody jealous of somebody else, and somebody jealous of somebody else. You see this all over. You see this all over. So the word rival, it's a teaser, an annoyer, a persona non grata, somebody that, that is unwelcome. So I'm going to read verse 6 again. And her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. The Lord closed her womb. It was the Lord. She was mad at somebody else for something that God was doing in her life. Hannah was mad at Penina. And allowing an opportunity to be jealous instead of her taking it to God. Hannah was mad at Penina for her womb being closed and giving the power to Penina over her life. Like if Penina has the ability to close somebody's womb. There's certain things in your life that you're not going to see. That you have to know that God is blessing you. verse 7 so it was year by year year by year so this year by year we have to remember that the devil what got the devil kicked out of heaven was that he loves to compare so we sometimes talk about the devil and he's a liar and he's all this stuff and yes he is but we have to remember his tactic that got him kicked out of heaven was he said I'm going to be like God so comparison is his favorite attack. He always wants you to look at, well, look at so-and-so's body. Well, look at so-and-so's social media page. Well, look at so-and-so's marriage. Well, look at so-and-so's job. Well, look at so-and-so this. He always wants you to look and compare. That's why we have to compare ourselves to Christ. 
And when we compare ourselves to Christ, we see that we all fall short of the glory of God. We're all the same height at the feet of Jesus. That gives you strength and understanding. The devil, Osiris, we're going to go with 2 Corinthians 12, 9. The devil knows our weaknesses and he will make you pay. He will make you pay when he knows that you're striving for something, that you're begging God for something. He will make you pay for the things that you want if you don't wait on the timing of the Lord. We're going to go all the way to 11. So the devil knows our weaknesses. Weaknesses are not bad. Not realizing the strength of our weakness is bad. There is a strength. There is a biblical strength in your weakness. The biblical strength of weakness is right here when the apostle Paul says and he said to me Paul is pleading with Jesus to take away an infirmity <coughs> and Jesus says my grace is sufficient for you my strength is made perfect in what no 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 your Jesus says my strength is made perfect in what in your weakness in what you're asking God that you don't see, Jesus says, eh, ay, que yo me voy a glorificar. Jesus says, that thing that you got going on with your kids, that's where my blessing is going to be seen. I, so basically what you got to do is look at your life and be like, yo, I'm blessed because I'm weak there, I'm weak there, I'm weak there, I'm weak there, so Christ is there, so Christ is there, so Christ is there, so Christ is there. That's a big difference. That's a big difference because now your weakness, now every time the devil comes and goes, nah, 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 you just point to the cross and you go, nah, 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 big difference. There's a big difference. There's a shift in the mind. There's a shift in the mind in the spiritual realm when you realize, Jesus, I need you right here. Lord, look at my kids. For the mothers that are in the room, Lord, look at my kids. Lord, look at my son. Look at my son. He's bound. That's where you're going to set him free. Lord, look at my son. He's dealing with some sexual things. Lord, look at him. Lord, look at my son. Look at his son. Look at my daughters. Look at the. you got to realize that what you're doing in your life is pointing all of your weaknesses to Christ. So he says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities. We're supposed to boast in the things that, that, that are weak in our lives. We're supposed to boast on how sinful we are. We're supposed to boast on how nasty we are. Because why? Why would we do that? Porque somos masoquistas. Why would we do that? Let's take it to scripture. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. When you boast in what is not good, the power of Christ rests upon you. That's what we're seeing in the world. Everybody wants to boast at what they're good at. Everybody wants to boast. Look at me. Oh, look at me. Look at I got it all figured out. Mentira del diablo. Ain't nobody got it figured out. Because if you did, Jesus wouldn't have to die on the cross for your life. Ain't nobody got this thing figured out. Nobody got this thing figured out. Only Jesus is great. Only Jesus is the Lord. Only Jesus is good. Only Jesus is the king. The apostle Paul, he mastered the art. This guy was completely obliterated all through scripture. Look at what he says. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities. That's what Hannah wasn't doing. Hannah wasn't taking pleasure in the closed womb. I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses. For what? No, you got to say that one with your chest. For what? For Christ's sake. For Christ, you both. So this is the power that Hannah had. And then Paul says, for when I am weak, oh my God, then I am strong. Oh man, yo, I'm really bad at managing money. But yo, I know that God is going to show up right there. Yo, oh my God, my kids, look at them, man. They are a mess. I ruined them by the way that I was living. But I know that God is going to be there because I trust in God. Look at your children. Look at your life and speak the kingdom over your life. My mom, and I want to say this very humbly, my mom used to come to my house, would dump out the liquor in my house, and I used to get into an argument with my mom. <coughs> my mom used to come to my house while I was drunk 
and high smoky cigarettes. And she used to say, before I die, I'm going to watch you preach. Where's my mom? Let me tell you something. Speak life over your children. I remember the first day that I, when she used to tell me that, I used to say, I, ain't, I, I don't like Jesus. I don't like Christians. Y'all a bunch of fake people. I said it a little more colorful than that, but I'm on the anointed altar of the Lord in my ignorance and my black mannequin. I used to say, Mom, I'm not doing that. She used to say, I don't care. I don't care. You're going to preach. Watch. I'm going to watch you. You're a man of God. You're a man of God. You got to speak that over your children. You got to tell them, yo, it ain't what you said. It's what God said about you. It's what I'm praying over you. And that's what Hannah was missing. Hannah was missing that she couldn't see that there was something that God was doing in her life. Because all she could do was look at the current situation. Year by year, verse 7, Osiris, back to Samuel. Year by year. <coughs> year by year. Year by year, they went up to the house of the Lord. And year by year, she provoked her. Look at what it says. Therefore, she wept and she didn't eat. Depression set in. That's her fault. The depression in your life. It's your fault. The anxiety in your life is your fault for not applying biblical scripture and living it in those areas. Penina made her, look, it says it right there. She provoked her so much that she wept and she did not eat. You are a wise woman. Let all the mothers in the house say, I am a wise woman. No, no, come on, come on. Say, I am a wise woman. Praise God. Listen, you are blessed. You are being used by God. And you are also impatient. That was Hannah's issue. Hannah's issue was that year after year, she kept saying to the Lord, why do I not have children yet? Truth be told, being completely honest, none of us like waiting. One of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit is patience. So when you learn how to wait, guess who you are like? Like God. His timing is perfect. He's never early. He's never late. You got to understand that God is outside of time. For God, it's not Sunday at 1056 because in China, it's already a different time. So that's why when people say that the world is going to end on April 8th in America, I'm like, well, it's April 9th in China. So did we miss? The, is the, is the, does the end of the world go in time zones? Amen? Open your eyes. The worst kind of waiting is waiting on God. Because God ain't, God ain't, like, God is like, And we're like, oh, Lord, 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 look at Hannah saying, Lord, look at my womb. Lord, why aren't you blessing me? Lord, how come you're not giving me children? Year after year after year after year. Y Dios de lo más tranquilo. God, patient as ever. When you're in a hurry for something, you must remember that God is not in a hurry. God is not in a hurry. That's why sometimes you see people marry the wrong person. That's why you see you take the wrong job. When you have to make a decision, I always teach the church. When you have to make a decision, always choose the one that brings you closer to God. That's from God. Simple. God, should I do this or should I do that? Which one brings me closer? That one, boy. That's the one I want you to do. What is God's waiting room? This is what God's waiting room is. When you're in a hurry for something to happen and God doesn't allow it. As human beings, we hate to wait. When you're waiting, that's when anxiety sets in. That's when depression sets in. Do you know that fear and depression and anxiety is having faith in the devil? The only way to kill anxiety and fear is through faith. Yo, no matter what happens there, God is going to be glorified. Though he slay me. Though 
The Bible says, though he slay me, I will trust him. Though he slay me, he's going to do something. That's what we're missing. That's what Hannah is missing. That's what some of the mothers, the wise women in this room are missing. Not realizing that what God is doing in your life, it is coming. It's coming. So God, what we see is God was growing Hannah and building her character in the waiting. The waiting that she was doing was doing something greater inside of her. But she couldn't see what was happening. She couldn't see that God was making her a wise woman. This waiting pushed Hannah closer to God. The waiting, the, the, the worrying, the, is God going to bless me, pushed her closer to God. Take a look at your children in your life. And look at your children and say, whatever's happening in your life is pushing all of us closer to God. Every problem in your life is a blessing that's coming. Every single one. All of them. <laughs> Verse 8, then it says, then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, the husband that loved her, didn't love the other wife. The husband that gave her a double portion. Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? There's things that are happening in your life that the, de the devil's never going to let you enjoy wherever you're at. If you stand over here, he's going to tell you to stand over there. If you stand over there, he's going to tell you to stand over there. The Bible says, be still. Be still. Be still, wise women, and realize that what God is doing in your life, it is a process. God's delay is not a denial. We think because God didn't say yes, that that means that he's saying no. That's what I've taught the church since we opened the church. If God says no or God says yes, I'm still blessed in Christ. If God says no or God says yes, I'm still going in another direction. If God says no or God says yes, you're still seated in heavenly places. If God says no or God says yes, it's equal direction. We have to get out of the mindset that God is a yes type of God. Imagine you tell God to give you a Ferrari and that Ferrari you wrap 200 around a telephone pole. So thank God that you don't have a Ferrari. <coughs> My one future Harvard grad said, thanks, thank, thanks be to God. Listen to this. The Bible says in verse 8 that she was weeping. That she, it describes Hannah as weeping, as, as not eating, and as grieved. The devil is sitting back watching Hannah, tormenting herself. Nobody was hurting Hannah. Was anybody hurting Hannah? No, she was hurting herself. She was hurting herself because she didn't see what she wanted to see. That's why in the kingdom, we don't move by sight. We don't move by sight. Let me tell you something. If I couldn't afford this place for the church, I for sure can't afford 10 Winter Street for a church either. But I know that God can because I'm not going to operate off of what I can see in my pocket. Because if I cannot, if, if we're operating by what we can see, you're never going to do nothing great for the Lord. If your vision for your children don't involve the supernatural hand of God over your children, they ain't doing nothing. You ain't praying enough. You got to understand, you got to look at your kids and you got to say to your children, yo, I gave birth to you so that you can do something great for the kingdom of God. Yo, I did, so I, I, I was in labor. You know, we're Spanish, so everything is very exaggerated. If you were in labor for two hours, we're like, wow, yo, yo, daba ahí por siete horas. You know what I'm saying? I was there for seven hours. They had to cut me up. No, you're going to be great. Everything I had to go through, you're going to be great for God. Everything I went through, you're going to be grateful for God. Whatever's hurting in your life, that's where the power of God is going to be seen. And, and Elkanah says to her, he said, yo, babe, what's up? Am I not great? Verse 9, so Hannah doesn't realize as we go into verse 9, she couldn't even consume. Okay? She couldn't even carry a baby. Because she was so depressed from not eating, she was malnourished 
the baby would have aborted. There's blessings that are coming over the lives of your children that they cannot come yet because of your internal condition. Yo, the Lord, that's what I said last night when I was writing this sermon and I said, yo, Lord, wow. The body cannot sustain. We got to really start teaching people the kingdom does not operate externally. The kingdom operates internally. They said to Jesus, he said, don't look to the left or don't look to the right, brother Rob. They said the kingdom is within. So everything that happens in the life of Hannah, God is trying to tell her it's within. It's within. It's an internal change. That's why people come to Christ and they give their life to Jesus. And then you see them five years later and nothing happened because you gave your life to Jesus as dead works. You didn't give your life to Jesus through a true repentance. It's when you give your life to Jesus through true repentance. When you, when you let your God change your internal environment. It's your internal environment will dominate the external environment. But we think that, no, I'm going to start going to church when, 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 when this works out and when this works out and when this works out. Guess what? That ain't working out, that ain't working out, or that ain't working out. And that's what's happening with Hannah. So her insides are so, are so barren. Her insides are so bitter from her not having her womb open that God's saying, yo, I want to bless you. But I can't because it's not time. It's not time. You're going to see what God is going to do over your kids. And let me tell you something. You may not be alive. Your funeral may be the trigger that sets your generation in motion. God is not a liar. He's hearing your prayers for your children. And your kids won't know that you're not even dead. You're sleeping until the kingdom comes and then we all wake up for the wedding supper of the Lamb. You may not see it all. Abraham didn't see the promised land. The Bible said that Abraham, he said, yo, I don't see it. But I know he's not a liar. So I know that even though I don't see, that's what we read in faith in Hebrews 11. Abraham and all the patriarchs, they're like, yo, I don't see, but el Dios mío no, ment no, no es mentiroso. I don't see it, but I know it's going to happen. And that's what Hannah couldn't see. She couldn't see that even though God closed her womb for that moment, that there was something great coming in her life. There was something great coming in her life, but she was tormenting herself. So Hannah arose after they finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. Yo, this next couple of verses like, oh. Look at this. And she was in bitterness of soul. All we've been reading the whole sermon is how nasty she was inside because she couldn't see the, the blessing. She was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. God closing her womb pushed her into the presence of God. The things that you don't have, the things that you don't see over your children, they're pushing you to the glory of God. If the issues in your life brought you to your knees in front of Christ, then to God be the glory for the issues in your life. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O oh Lord of hosts, I just picture this. I just picture somebody just sitting in church. So we're here, a temple. Pleading to the Lord, if you will look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child. You see why we have to be specific when we pray, pray to the Lord. She said, I want a male child. Then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. No razor shall come upon his head, which is a Nazarite vow. And it happened. As she continued praying for the Lord, Eli, the priest, watched her mouth. 
Now Hannah spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved. But her voice was not heard. I don't know what it is about that. that, that. I, I just, I, 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 can, I can see that. I can see somebody pleading to God to bless her with a child. Now Hannah spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved. It's like this is a story about a woman struggling to see the timing of God. She's her biggest enemy. God didn't say that you couldn't have kids. He just said it's not right now. Then there's always that one person. Right here, it's like a cold shower. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. You know that one, come on, man. You know that one person, right, where you're like, yeah, yeah, and they just come and like, Psh. You're over here crying out to God. You're over here trying to live your life for the Lord. And then the enemy comes in a, in a different form. So it was Penina before, and now it's Eli the priest. Okay? Because the devil, what he does is he disguises himself as the angel of light. The Bible says that the serpent is the serpent of old. The same thing he does to you, Sister Arlene, he does to me. The same thing he does to Sister Kimberly. The same thing he does to Sister Arlene. It's the same thing. It's just a package deal. He puts a bow on it for you. He puts a lace on it for you. It's the same thing. So Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk? You have to read this in context. You know why he said that? Because <clears throat> there was a corruption of the priesthood in Jerusalem during this time. And the priests were allowing fornication in the temples. They were allowing drunkenness. Eli's two sons were drinking in the temple. So because of his internal environment, he thought that that was the same for her. Be careful what somebody says over your life. It's really a reflection of them. Be careful what people say over your life that what God is not going to do something. If God didn't do nothing for you, that's none of my business. But God is going to do something for me. God is going to do something for my kids. And it's not because we're obligating God, but because we're operating in the faith unto God, unto obedience unto God, through the commandments of God, because we have the seed of God, because we have the promise of God that's given through us by faith in Jesus Christ. So be careful because Eli's saying to her, what are you, drunk? No, you are the one that's drunk. Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, lowercase l, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink. You know what? The things that people are saying over your life, if that ain't true, you got to speak against that. You got to say, you know what? That ain't true. You know what? What you're saying that I'm drunk in the, in the house of God, that ain't what it is. Because the devil will continue to knock on your head with these lies. You cannot entertain the lies. And now we see a change in Hannah after she prayed. After she made a vow to God internally, we see a shift in the narrative now. We see that she says, nah, bro, that ain't me. That ain't me. Whatever you're saying that you see in me, that ain't me. But I have poured out my soul. Leave it right there. But I poured out my soul before the Lord. Have you ever just poured out your soul for the Lord? Have you ever just had one of those moments where you're like, That's what we're seeing here. That's what we're seeing in the life of Hannah. We're seeing a comeback story in Hannah's life. Do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman. Verse 16. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I spoke until now. Then Eli answered and said, go in peace. And the God of Israel, there's only one. The God of Israel grant petition which you have asked him. And she said, let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and what? 
Boom. Why did she eat? You know why she ate? Because she got right with God. She got right with God. She set her in. She said, yo, you know what? You know what, Mr. Jesus? I'm going to pray for this one more time. I'm going to pour out my soul to you one more time. I'm going to get a line. Watch this. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to sit in your temple. The whole situation pushed her to that one moment where she was weeping to God. Internally first and then externally. That's how the kingdom moves. Internally, externally. The day that I got saved was not the day that I was given a church internally then externally she ate and her face was no longer sad it was gone it was gone the pain was gone her vow to god was gone made it gone be careful if you make a vow to god and you don't complete it then they rose early in the morning and worshiped before the lord how long are you just going to wait for God to bless you? At some point, you got to kick it into worship mode. You know what, God? I'm going to thank you right now for what I just asked you for. God, I don't care if I got to see it after the kingdom comes down, but I'm going to thank you right now for my kids. God, I'm going to thank you in advance, Lord, for my household that is going to be blessed. God, I'm going to turn up the worship music right now, even though everything is exploding around me and be like, I enter the gates with nothing but things. And people are like, yo, but what's up with this dude? You know what? It don't matter. It don't matter what it looks like. It don't matter that my womb is closed. It don't matter if you think I'm drunk. I'm going to worship the Lord because I got right with Jesus. I got my situation in line. And now it don't matter what anybody says or what they don't say God is going to bless you he's going to bless your children God is going to bless your children because God is not a liar he hears your prayers he hears what you speak over them he sees the deposits that you put into the kingdom your kids are going to be blessed because of what you have done for God and what God has done for you remember that remember that so they rose early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord. And they came to their house of Ramah. And Elkanah knew his wife again. And the Lord remembered her. Oh. Oh. Y'all going to have to pull me off of this altar for this one. So it came to pass. Come on. Somebody clap for the Lord, man. Come on. I thought the womb was closed, bro. I thought God said, no, you see a delay. A delay is not a no. It was when she ate and now she could conceive. It was when she went to God and she got right with God. And then she said, yo, now I'm going to eat. Now I'm going to put nourishment in my body. Now I'm going to stop talking like that. I'm going to stop looking like that. I'm going to get my walk with God serious now. And then all of a sudden, so it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah, what? So did God close the womb or was it just a timing issue? So God is blessing you, but he's not blessing you when you say, he ain't blessing you on your time. He, what Hannah didn't even know is that God was making her a wise woman the entire time. The entire time was so that Christ can be seen in her. The entire time that everyone was making fun of Hannah, God was saying, let them laugh, but I'm going to bless you. Don't listen to what they said. It, it's what I say. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, because I've asked for him for the, from the Lord. Now the man Elkanah and all of his house went up to offer to the Lord yearly sacrifice for the vow. Verse 22. But Hannah did not go up. For she said to her husband, not until the child is weaned. So basically what's happening now is she, she's told God, this baby that you gave me, I'm going to give him back to you. But let me just raise him up a little bit. Let me spend a little time with him. Let me enjoy my blessing. Now the man Okana and all of his house went up, uh, verse 22, but Hannah did not go up, but she said to her husband, not until the child is weaned, then I will take him, that he may appear before the Lord and remain forever. So Okana, her husband, said to her, do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only let the Lord establish his word. Then the woman stayed and nursed her son until she had weaned him. You're raising your children, but there's some point where you got to let them go. You're raising your children, but there's some point you got to give them to Jesus. Remember, nothing belongs to us. Your children are not your children. Your children are God's children. They just came out of your womb. 
When you operate like that, that your money is God's, your life is God's, your possessions are God, your children is God, your house is God, your job belongs to God, it's a different mindset. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing Hannah. She knows that she made this vow to the Lord. Then the woman stayed in nursery until she had weaned him. Now, when she had weaned him, she took him up with her and three bulls. Now she's going back to the Lord with an offering. One eat one eat for a flower, a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh, and the child was young. Then they slaughtered a bull and brought the child to Eli. She said, oh, my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood by you here praying to the Lord. She's going back to God, and she's saying, yo, remember me like I was the one that I was like ah Jesus you did it Jesus you did it you Jesus you you blessed me Jesus what you what I you heard me Jesus you were there when my kid was on crack Jesus you were there when my kid was in jail Jesus you were there when my daughter was getting abused Jesus look at what you did God is sovereign he is sovereign not a cockroach crawls in the park in the projects unless God directs his steps. God is that sovereign. A leaf doesn't blow on a tree unless God says, move this way and then that way. God is sovereign. He has control over everything, and we're seeing it right now. She goes back to the Lord. Some of you parents need to go back to God. Some of you mothers have to go back to God and bring your kid back to God and say, Lord, what I prayed for, here he is. Here she is. And give your child back to God. For this child I prayed, and the Lord granted me my petition, which I asked him. Therefore, I've also lent him to the Lord as long as he lives. <coughs> and she be lent to the Lord, so they worship the Lord there. As we close... We can see that she finally learned to trust God. As we see, it was a process of time. Verse 20 says, the process of time. That God was putting Hannah through a process of time. That saying is only four times in the Bible. It's the last time it says it in verse 20. The process of time. There's things that are happening in your life, but it's a process of time. It takes time for greatness to come about. It's a process of time. So now in Hannah's prayer, in chapter 2, it says, And Hannah prayed. This is an intercessory prayer of joy. Look at this. In chapter 2. And Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. No one is holy like the Lord, for there is none beside you, nor is there any rock like our God. Some prayers, you don't have to pray for something. Some prayers, you just got to start thanking God. You just got to start breaking things in the spiritual realm. The Bible says, magnify the name of the Lord. Hannah goes out into this amazing prayer. She says, talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is the God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bowls of the mighty are broken, and those who stumble are girded with strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, and the hungry have ceased to hunger. Even the barren has borne seven, and she carries many children, has become feeble. The Lord kills and makes alive. This is somebody that knows how the spiritual realm operates. This is how women of God have to speak over their lives and over their children. Look at this. The Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and he brings up. The Lord makes poor, makes rich. He brings low and lifts up. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princes and make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set world, the world upon them. He will guard the feet of his saints, but the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength no man shall prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. From heaven he will thunder against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Then Elkanah went to his house at Rama, but the child ministered to the Lord before Eli the priest. Let us all rise to our feet. Osiris, if you could get that first worship song ready. 
Watch this. Watch this. Watch this, how her life unfolded. In verse 18, look at this. She left the baby there in verse 18. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, even as a child wearing a linen ephod. Moreover, his mother used to make him a little robe and bring it to him year by year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, the Lord give you descendants from this woman for the loan that was given to the Lord. Meaning Samuel was such a blessing to the priesthood that Eli was speaking blessings over her. Then they would go to their home. Verse 21. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. Was her womb closed or was it a process of time? Are you blessed in a process of time or has God forsaken you? When God said he closed her womb, the closed womb pushed her into the presence of God. What you don't see is making you get closer to God. What you don't see happening in the lives of your children is bringing you closer to God. She went on to have a total of six kids. And you know who we don't hear about anymore? Penina. Because the voices get silenced. The more you seek the presence of God, the more the voices get silenced. The more you seek the presence of God, what they say about you don't hurt no more. What they think about you don't hurt no more. It doesn't matter. She was blessed. God was waiting to bless her, but her timing was off. Here's my prayer for the mothers that are going to come up. You're going to come in a moment, please. And you're going to offer your children up to the Lord. One last time. For all the chips. For all the glory. It doesn't matter what situation they're in. You're going to give them back to the owner who gave them to you. Before we do that, if there's anybody in this room who has not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. If you've never repented for your sins unto God, we want to help you in prayer. Come to the front and receive this Jesus that we're talking about.